Hey, this is Dave with OC Astronomy, and this is a StarSense camera. I haven't had one uh, before, but I uh, found a used one, and so I thought I might try it to, uh, to help me generate a pointing model for my uh, uh, telescope in the dome. Now you'll notice something unusual about where it's located right now. I have it mounted on the underside of the mount, and there's a reason for that. You can see up here is where it was mounted. That is the uh, normal finder shoe. Here's my normal finder scope. And um, I can put that in the bracket, put it on whenever I need it. Otherwise it stays off. So, And normally my guide scope I've been putting right up here. The reason why I put the star sense there is that I'm inside this dome. And where this was up here, you have to tell the dome slaving parameters and one of the slaving parameters to, to get the, the slot to line up, one of the parameters is how high up the optical tube is. Well, in order to get the thing to, to line up, I had to tell it that the optical tube location was way up here. And so it was making the geometry weird whenever it went to one side versus the other. On one side, it could see out the dome okay, and then the other side it couldn't because this is not exactly in the center. It's over on one side uh, off center. And so it worked it worked all right on one side, but whenever it would flip around, it wouldn't. So what I got the idea of, I'm using this uh, um, ADM Accessories Lasmandi style uh, clamp, and I put the, uh, the small finder shoe that comes with it, um, I put that on there, and you'll notice I have it rotated upside down. I don't know if I needed to do that or not, but I thought that I would rotate the uh, star sense to where it would be in a normally upright position like if it was up on that shoe it would be standing up um, and so I thought I would, I would orient it the correct way unless it were to think that I was in Australia or something and so um, I think what the star sense camera does is whenever it you tell it to find a location it goes there it takes a picture it plate solves and using the center pixel that you've calibrated um, or if you haven't done it first, you have to line up your optical tube to that with a bright star and tell it the bright star is in my optical tube center point. And then it finds the pixel grid and locates that pixel and that becomes the center point for your image. And I think what it does is it plate solves around it and says relative to the center of that image, where's the center of my, um, where's the center of my plate solve? And so if you tell it to go to an RA deck, then it finds that center point and reports back to the hand controller or to the sky portal or to the PWI software. It reports back center point is here. And so uh, then, then that is able to store an alignment point in your hand controller or, or on your app on your phone or on your uh, software. And I have confirmed that the center points are stored on the software, not in the camera. The thing that's stored in the camera is the configuration point of the center dot. And you can actually put it on a different mount and tell it to use a different profile and it'll put a, a center point for that mount. So I could line up the center point for here and I could line up the center point for a small refractor and tell it the different center point offsets and it'll remember those. Um, but the, as far as the uh, image and alignment data, that's all the, the mechanics is all in the hand controller, the software, or your app. Now, what I was curious about and what I'm try, going to try to do is I want to run a point uh, alignment model with this and uh, get, generate some points and try to do the uh, CPWI um, software put the points in using StarSense because the new uh, beta release of it uses StarSense and it works really well. I've actually tried it and, it and it accepts the points, it plate solves, it finds the center and it enters a center point for that dot and for, uh, for whatever location you're in. So I want to try to use the StarSense and build up an image or a point model using uh, different parts of the sky for different orientations of the optical tube and different that'll give it different weight distributions uh, and then on on one side of the axis and then on the other and so what I'm hoping is uh, to get an accurate model built up using star sense 
and then I'm going to go back and do the same orientations and points, but this time I'm going to do it using my optical tube, my camera, and centering it on the crosshairs of the CCD, and telling my alignment points manually to the on the stars that I'm in in uh, CPWI, the, the software. And what I want to know is if the uh, the tracking model that this builds, the points that it builds up, it gives you the error every, everywhere you are in the sky, and it does that based on the, the model points. I want to know if the error terms that it generates and the error terms that, it, that this generates by centering a star in the crosshairs, if they're the same or are pretty close to the same. I would expect all the terms for like polar alignment and RA index offset, uh, switch offset, uh, cone value, flexure, all those things are model terms that you can find uh, if you go and see PWI and you look at the model terms, it tells you like six or eight different terms that it's calculated and you can look at those terms and uh, I am hoping that the star sense and the other method give me a similar value. Uh, and then I'll know that I have a really good pointing model. Either way, uh, I'm gonna test them. And the way I'm gonna test them is, after I develop the pointing model, I'm gonna issue it a go-to's on uh, pointing right and left on either side of the mount, uh, or, or north and south on either side of the mount. And that should give me, I'm gonna just tell it, go to this point. And it's gonna be kind of in the center of the zone where I'm getting the points. And I'm hoping if it's inside one of those big triangles that it uses to, uh, to calculate the offsets for it, I'm hoping that it'll find the go-to. What I'm gonna do is then take a raw image. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to go to maybe a galaxy or something. Take an image and see how close that galaxy gets to the center of the crosshairs using the star sense model. And then I'll go back and use the point model that I made using the optical tube and the crosshairs uh, that I have to find the stars and move them in and center them on the crosshairs manually. And then I'm gonna see if it gets some uh, an object into the center of the crosshairs. So my objective is kind of, I, I wanna do a comparison between the accuracy of the star sense and the accuracy of doing a manual alignment of the dot to the crosshairs. Now I can see where maybe aligning it to the crosshairs will be more accurate because I'm using a lot longer focal length. Uh, it's an F7 and this is an F2. So uh, I'm using a lot longer focal length and I've also got a lot longer or a, a more sensitive camera uh, probably. I don't know about the camera chip that's in there but I imagine it's not as, maybe not as good as the uh, S big uh, nice STF camera. Um, so that should, this combination should be able to get a very exact pixel value to tell it this is the center point versus an F2 lens with a uh, smaller probably uh, chip that's in there. And so the pixel size and everything is gonna be a lot different in the pixel scale. So I expect that to give the advantage to this. However, the star sense does the plate solve without me finagling with it. So if I just send a go to, it'll go to that spot and take the image and plate solve it and then go to the next point and on and on and each one of those points should be uh, as accurate as a go to would normally be for this um, telescope because I am not going to mess with it. When I do the individual stars what I have to do is I, I tell it to go to and it's going to be off as I build the model up it'll get better and better but the first ones are going to be really off and then I'm going to have to to move the image over using the control pad on the software, move the star image over to the exact crosshairs. Um, I have to remember to do north and west, I guess, uh, as the final moves to put it, uh, to take up the backlash, and then I'll be able to, to center it on the crosshairs. So I have an input on that, whereas when the star sense does it, it just does a go-to and it snaps a picture. Uh, if you build up enough of those points, it should really find your uh, go-to accuracy to be really good once it starts using that model because it's true to what the StarSense camera is telling it, it does with a normal go-to, as opposed to a go-to plus me correcting it. Um, now, as I've built up star models before, 
uh, and got a pointing model going, I found that at, once you get to 10 or 12 stars, your go-to is pretty much right in the center every time. So I expect that with the uh, manual alignment of the stars and stuff. But I thought that this would be a service for anyone who is got in a dome and they're wondering if a StarSense camera would help them build up a mount model, uh, if it's worth their time, or if they should just use the go-to and then center it yourself and build up the points that way. I'm also curious to see. I don't expect, uh, I want to give the StarSense camera its due. It's very fast if you're in a uh, portable situation where you're taking your uh, you're lugging your stuff out in the middle of nowhere and then you are doing a uh, alignment and getting started on some photography out there. I guarantee you it's going to be a lot faster to do that than to manually find stars on your camera and, and align them that way. But uh, So if you can do a quick three or four points and then add 10 calibration stars or whatever it lets you do on the hand controller, I expect that would be a very quick and easy way to do it. So this is in a permanent uh, situation and I'm just trying to check the accuracy of using the StarSense camera versus using the slew to a star and centered in the crosshair method. So I hope that this experiment uh, works out. Of course, tonight it's cloudy. So what are you going to do? I thought I would at least set up a video about it and then I'll probably do the experiment uh, on a, the next clear night that I get and I'll try and post something. Cheers!